My art started as a way to relax and release, and it has become a way of helping me see. And I think it helps me accept the depth of the destruction I see around myself. I began drawing a lot of life and myself as an ecologist, and then it just transitioned and the life turned into piles of bones and I became the plague doctor. I was not the chronicler of life anymore. I really had switched to someone that was dark and expressing loss. So I've been an ecologist for about 25 years, working on various systems. When I started working on bark beetles, I never ever suspected I'd be working on climate change. In the past, beetle outbreaks have pretty much been seen as natural disturbances, just like fire. But within just a few years, beetles were acting so different. Outbreaks were expanding so fast. Pretty quickly, I realized that I had no choice but to work on climate change. Yeah, you can see some evidence of the beetles having been in here. So these are all bark beetles. This one right here happens to be mountain pine beetle. And this is the one that's had this huge epidemic that's killed more than 70 million acres of trees in the last outbreak, which is phenomenal. It's 10 times bigger than any outbreak in the past. The amount of acres this beetle has killed far surpasses what fire has affected over the same time period. The bark beetle is a warning, a harbinger of things to come, the canary and the coal mine, that stress is happening in our forests and that we should listen. This summer was phenomenal. It really broke a lot of records. You don't expect to go to Glacier in 97 degree weather. This is one of the iconic glaciers here that we're losing. A number of the glaciers really took a beating because they lost their snowpack. It's kind of ironic that what this place is named for is one of the things that's disappearing so fast. There's a drawback to being an ecologist in a way as you see a lot more than most other people see. They're seeing this pristine place that's been like this forever, and that's not really the case. There's a lot of changes happening. And that's the scary thing, is because this transition isn't one of those natural things. It's us. Trees are amazing. They have some of the greatest genetic diversity of anything on the planet. And so we're looking to see if some of these trees have genetics that make them very, very different. So every single ring that you can see is a different year of the life of this tree. And so you can look to see how the tree responded to the climate of that year. And then you can look at the climate record and see exactly how this tree has responded over time. Bark beetles, when they attack a tree, they do it in a big mass. The tree will quit fighting and it won't recover. So all the red you see, that's all caused by bark beetles. So I was just up here a few months ago and there was a red tree here and there. And what we're seeing now is red all the way across here, all the way down this slope. Look at these big old trees that have died. This is crazy. You get a really hot, dry year like this? Wow, look at that. Vlad is a graduate student that's been working with me for a little over a year. I was surprised how uh, much water is still in those creeks on the trail up. Oh yeah, yeah. Typically, like all of those are, or at least last summer, they were all dried up. Yeah. So I've really been inspired like um, by her passion oh, and her commitment to studying these systems. I've certainly picked up a bit of the, of the grief, just seeing the devastation and the loss. Yeah, it's pretty heart-wrenching. 
grad students and undergrads that want to go into ecology are asking me, well, I want to be an ecologist. And now, you know, listening to you and, li and seeing what's happening, I don't know if there's going to be a job for me. I don't know if I want that job. And I, I get it because I don't want the job anymore. But what I tell them is that this is probably the most important time to be an ecologist. When you start losing your big trees faster than they're growing back, then you're seeing complete ecosystem change. You lose some of the plants, you lose a lot of the birds, a lot of the bears will be forced down slope. You lose your snow quicker, you have lower flows in your rivers. That means that agriculture, people, fish, recreation, your economies in these communities all suffer. So there's a lot of cascading effects that happen in these ecosystems. There's a real mix of how I think ecologists are communicating what they're feeling to the public. There's so much pressure to put out a positive message about what's happening in the environment. But I think there's a lot of people that feel like I do. The grief I feel is one of the deepest kinds of grief that you can feel. It's the loss of entire species. It's the loss of magic interactions that have taken millennia to develop. And to just flick it away by not caring about it, that's hard for me to just accept that we're gonna let all this beauty just die. <laughs>